TGIF. How are you, Ren? Brock? Happy pre-Halloween. Pretty spooky week, right? So, if you guys recall, I don't know, maybe it was about a month ago, Buenos Dias Juan Arena, that I said it was too pat that many people were waiting for the election to short the market. Well, they're 200 handles late now, okay? So when everyone's waiting to do something at a certain time and the narrative is bought by the majority of waiting until the election to short a market, I become skeptical. So uh, pretty negative week. I don't think this is it. There could be bounces, but I actually think next target is around 3120. Hey, how are you, Giuseppe? And eventually uh, 2900, I have a couple of speed lines that have confluence right here, a little bit under uh, the 2900 level. Okay, so um, definitely a negative week. Uh, we could have some bounces here when I look at it short term. Look, you have a little uh, one, two, threes. Okay, so let me just get rid of this. So um, something that I have noticed, and I, you know, I was negative gold because, you know, I was, I'm still positive the dollar. I've been talking about a move in the dollar up to about 95 and a half or so. But um, something I've noticed on the DSI, there's hardly any bulls left in the metals. Okay, I mean, you have something like 18 and uh, 17 for silver. And when I look at the gold interday here, look at this. One, two, and I'd be waiting. So I'm starting to look ahead towards next week, uh, looking for a third drive here. Silver is actually tougher than gold the last couple of days, you could tell, but you have a one, two here. Gold structure, actually RSI structure looks a little better, but I, I'm going to wait for a break to new lows next week and look for a buy. Um, if we get back above 1880, which was a breakdown, then you have something interesting happening. Also, the day, the big down day that we had on Wednesday, um, I said there was no flight to quality into the bond market, and the bond sold off pretty good. Still looks like, you know, we could put it in a higher low, but, you know, you look at the 10-year, and, you know, we're still correcting, but the only thing that's containing rates now is this, okay? That's your uh, that your uh, two hundred day, yeah. That's your two hundred day. Kind of looks like a triangle. Maybe they could hold the yields down if we get some follow through to the downside and risk. But over this, there's open skies, okay, to at least a one percent yield, and I'm thinking higher. And this won't be so great for commodities. And it may not be so great for bonds. You know, initially, uh, the higher yields, people are going, well, maybe that's indicative of uh, economic growth. But you see this candle here? When rates went up yesterday, that was because of a crappy 10-year auction. All right? Lousy. Bid to cover. Weak. So... You could have rates go up just because there's no demand for the product, okay? And I think that's what's going on. People are waking up to our endless deficit spending, and they want more than 1%, okay? And, you know, they want more than 0.8%. So that's uh, what I see there. Uh, I don't think the VIX is done, even though we had a pullback yesterday. Uh, I don't think we're going to even, we shouldn't even get back near the breakout. 
so you probably look for you know spots to buy it maybe it'll try this gap at 34 but um i think we're going into the 50s okay before this is over especially if i'm right uh, about 2900 i would think that we could get into the mid 50s and let's see anything else uh looking ahead for next week i think there could be a trade here um i'm not sure how deep this is going to be but this uh euro pound is starting to look uh attractive to me we're ma actually making new lows for the move and i don't think we're confirming it we're not confirming it uh, i think i think greg is going to be with us last week and he talked about 89 and a half okay so i'm going to be watching euro pound next week I don't do a lot of, uh, you know, new positioning on Friday. In fact, I teach don't try to make your week on a Friday. And you can't ignore uh, the very good week that the dollar had, right? Here's your weekly. Uh, we have, and this is something I was talking about with Elliot people who thought that for sure we were just after this old ABC. They thought we were going to wash to new lows. My contention was we'd put in a higher low and that there was one more wave left up here. I'm not an Elliotician, but it looked incomplete to me. And this wave could take us up towards 96. I think the dollar going up and the S&Ps going down could uh, stretch into the end of the month. Um, you know, old Wall Street adage is that bears feast on Thanksgiving. So that's uh, less than a month away so those are some of my thoughts oil you know uh been working that one pretty good and you know i i'd look for a nice rally to sell maybe back to 38 if we could get it but uh oil still could work lower 36 was a big level that it's trying to hold i don't think this is done either and i think that's a, oh yeah one other thing that I'm looking for next week. And that's a uh, look at the yen here. All right. You know, you have a one, two, and you could have a three. Maybe all we do next week is uh, flush out this low at 104 and then turn. Uh, 78.6 is uh, 340. megaphone daily yeah so you know and this is part of the rate trade okay so we'll see what happens uh hope everyone had a good week uh it's always our mission every day to build up and edify traders leave it all out here on the floor for free for you guys and the way to say thank you is to become a subscriber so if we've helped you in face on our dime, um, why not reciprocate? And that's that's my pitch. So Blake, TGIF, buddy. Oh, I'm glad you do. I'm glad to add value and uh, you know help help people. This is not an easy thing to do. It only took me you know four years, and I'm starting to get the hang of it after 40 years okay so don't give up i'm a late bloomer and i've been in this business all those decades i still haven't wilted oh good morning dale uh just some guard you know some nature metaphors how are you my how are you my flower oh geez uh you're, the flower is wiltering uh i'm i'm my eyes are watering actually oh so, yeah yeah the it's, winds uh, i'm just tired you know it's the yeah. end of the week I, yeah. my my wife wasn't feeling well so i went and slept in the spare bedroom and oh gosh. And yeah that the, the the bed's not as comfortable as ours i mean it's still decent but it's not it's not your own bed you know what i mean so i do I didn't ever sleep, sleep on a roll a roll out bed from a couch with the iron bars 
underneath yeah, when the it, mattress like, jabs you like yeah. <laughs> o- only when i was at a motel six dale um, <laughs> back in the 80s that all yeah that's what I, what I did too but i was all <laughs> that's what yeah. i had at a house whenever house. whenever we would do um, <laughs> when our kids are were younger we would um we'd always stay at a embassy suites and the reason why we stayed at embassy suites is because oh yeah i liked it breakfast well you, well there there you you could it's great for families because you yeah. know you have a extra room that's like a living room that oh has yeah a couch and then you get breakfast in the morning so it's just for as a and parent, happy easy. hour huh oh and yeah. happy hour as a parent we didn't take advantage of that but it's just easy <laughs> when we were going you know traveling places just to stop in those hotels versus you know trying to stay at a hyatt and it's like okay you know we paid double the amount and that we don't we have no amenities and it's like the rooms are small it's like screw that so we we'd go to these embassy suites but the kids would always complain about like the couches you know oh yeah that, that bar in it and it's like like hey you can be sleeping on the floor i mean you, you'd be all right you're not gonna yeah. die hey uh <laughs> great job on that uh blog like you and the team um uh, yeah i want to make everyone aware uh, a lot of effort went into painting different scenarios on the election um blake and the team put together uh when's that going to be out blake uh well you know um uh it's supposed to be well um i I wanted to put in fresh charts today so it'll be out by tomorrow um by the weekend so you guys will have the weekend okay so let's talk about that for a little bit because um obviously the election is going to be tuesday night so that means monday and tuesday we'll have time to talk about here you know we'll have time to sorry we'll have time to talk about the election sorry about that guys it's it's just you know i'm tired right um we'll have time to talk about the election monday and tuesday but it you know you you guys will be able to read the blog and you'll have a good basis an idea of what my general thought process is. There are a lot of different scenarios that can happen, um, uh, you know, next Tuesday. Um, and, and that's, that's the, the key component of it all. And uh, uh, one of our traders in the chat room was like, you know, Hey, do we normally have volatility, you know, on election day or up to election day? And, you know, I think, I think, we're just going to be kind of drifting around um, the next few sessions. It's not going to, th- there, are, there is something really important actually that's happening on uh, Monday. Uh, we have the RBA rate decision. So if you, if you're like me and you got some Aussie ex- uh, exposure, it's, you know, uh, we've got to pay attention to that because the RBA actually meets ahead of the election Monday night, uh, you know, so, which would be Tuesday more Monday. Wait, Monday night, hold on, let me double check that. Monday night, which I think it's Tuesday morning. I, I need to I need to confirm that. Uh, give me one second, guys. It is Monday night, Tuesday morning. That's what it is. So yeah, it's Monday night, Tuesday morning. So we're gonna have to pay attention to that if you have any Aussie exposure. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get, I'm gonna have some Aussie exposure um uh going into that uh depends what happens today but anyway um that's just that's something that's happening um just just so you guys know but more than likely it's just going to be kind of range bound activity between now and tuesday it's probably not a bad idea to to consider um you know having a little bit less exposure but if you if you really believe, and, and this is this is the one thing I, I, I will state, and I'm going to state this for today, and then we're going to get into the charts right now because Greg is, Greg is going to be here today. Um, most scenarios that I see point to a continued equity market rally. Believe it or not, Dale, um, you know, thinking it all through and thinking it all out, um, most of them would be an equity market rally. The, 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 the problem that we would have uh, would be like a Biden win and 
people didn't downvote ballot and you know we had a, a republican senate again uh and a democratic house i think that would be you know more of our risk off scenario um just because biden wouldn't be able to get anything through uh the senate and you know we would just be like oh shoot there's no stimulus coming that type of thing so anyway uh and but for the most part every every other scenario continues to point to stocks moving higher going into this next year so um with that being said you you might get some people preparing for for um for higher equity prices and that's why being at support here in the s p i think you you know i'd be very hard pressed to be short down here i would think that we drift back up towards 3400 over the course of the next couple of days um or maybe even 3350 something in that neighborhood but you know back to mid-range i think that's that's what the market's going to be probably doing. And, and, that, and, and, and if you think about that, how that works with the dollar, that means the dollar probably, it, you know, if, if you believe, if you really believe equities are going lower, you need to be also believing that you should be selling dollars because no one's going to want dollars as they deploy for the continuation of a reflation trade. So, you know, if you, if you really believe, hey, stocks are moving higher, I'm going to uh, be selling dollars. This might be the day that you sell some dollars in preparation of, you know, um, um, higher equity prices. So anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's do this while I'm here. Um, I, I see in Europe, we plunged below the support, didn't last very long, price stop. This looks like a very big stop run right here. So I'm going to write down that today, even though we've been below it, 32.50 is support for the S&P. Okay. Resistance today will be 33.40, there's 33.43, there's 33.63. So I'm going to call it in the middle at 33.50. And I think we're in a range and I wouldn't be surprised if equities, you know, power back a little bit today. All right, let's go into the, let's go into the currency pairs now. So the Euro obviously got the beat down uh, following, um, you know, uh, I almost called her Janet Yellen. <laughs> Lagarde. Lagarde, Christine Lagarde. Thank you. Um, we are, you know, the, the Euro got the, the beat down. Um, and, and I'll tell you the Euro, still looks weak. And if stocks go down, th this is the first place I'll be looking for. Like, let's say, let's say stocks go down following the election for whatever reason, you know, whether I'm right or wrong, or just, let's just argument sake. Uh, I'm going to be shorting the Euro. I'll be shorting other things too. I'll be buying dollars against other things, but I definitely will be shorting the Euro because the Euro is not acting well. However, I do think there are a lot of people that are going to be waiting for the euro down here at 115. So, um, you know, if you look at, and Andre's not here, so I'll just go ahead and do this. You know, if you look at you know, kind of what's developed here is, you know, we could get, you know, a, a, a euro um, continuation move down here to 116.30. I think that should offer us some support here. Then this 127% extension, but we might be just stalling here at the 78%. I'm going to write down 116.30. With resistance now, uh, any move back up today, any move back up to 117.20 should be resistance. It is trading heavier. Um, so just, but like I said, if you guys are, if you guys are a believer that uh, that that um, you know the dollar should be going lower and stocks are moving higher, you know maybe the euro is a great value right now because now everybody knows because everybody already knew that that Lagarde's going to set the table for basically more easing come December. We all knew that. The risk was, oh, is she going to you know do something yesterday? She didn't. Um, was she going to lay the groundwork for December? Everybody knew she was going to, 
but she was really dovish yesterday. So that's kind of that we're still dealing with the aftermath of the Euro, but you know, people will look at Euro denominated debt and say, you know, I, I was talking to guys in our office yesterday and they're like, yeah, but you know, this is just, these are just better levels for people to, you know, institutions to diversify into euros, you know, as, as, uh, as that shift between, you know, getting out of dollars, not all dollars, but, you know, diversifying out of some dollars into the Euro zone, this is uh, the opportunity. So, um, you know, I know those of you in Europe will say, well, Europe's got their own problems. Believe me, here in the United States, we've got our problems too. Um, it's like, a, it's, it's like a, you still have to do the old uh, least dirty shirt in the hamper right now. Okay, I got to continue on. Let's go over to the cable. So here's the pound. We ripped up higher today. Not sure why, um, but we did. And so we held the 618. We, we talked about the importance yesterday of the 618 retracement. That yes. comes in at 128.66. I'm going to write down today 128.70 because that's... Your favorite guy is here today too, Blake. Who? Mark Newton. We're hoping we don't. Yeah, we we're hoping we don't have another technical glitch. I yeah, I rescheduled him. He's going to be here today. Oh, oh, that's awesome. Okay, let's keep Joe off the. Uh, yeah, that, that was uh, what I was about to say. Uh, oh, I see. I, I, I didn't want. I didn't want. I'm not going to. I called any, it. I'm not going to blame anybody. But let's just keep Joe glitch. away from the technology today. So. <laughs> it wasn't um, Joe. It was a technical glitch. Poor Joe's like. 130 is going to be resistance. Steve was very mean to him. Oh, yeah. I you're whipped him. You're, very, you can, you're a tough taskmaster. Aussie. Yeah. Um, okay, so the Aussie. So yet, yesterday, the Aussie dollar um, slumped through this trend line. And I saw a bunch of uh, other wow. analysts getting all bearish, the Aussie. But I'm like, nah, I don't know if you should be doing that. I, I thought we were going to take the stops below 70 cents first, but we never did. Um, but we're holding 70 cents, but you can see we have a wedge. This is a, and, and I'll just tell you guys, this is a bearish wedge. If you guys don't know why it's a bearish wedge, it's because we have lower highs, consistent lows. So when you look at a bearish wedge, if I had, I always tell you guys, if I had to throw a number on it, I would say there's a 60% chance we break lower. There's a 40% chance we still go higher. So just because it's a bearish wedge, that just means it has the propensity to go lower. Doesn't mean it has to go lower. All right, so- It sure um, measures big. Uh, yeah, it does. I mean, you know, the, look, this is, a, this is following the election, I mean, you know, we, we could, we could have, if you a, take it from the top to the well, bottom. Yeah, I'm not, huge. I, I, I'm going to try to aim. Okay. Logically you want to freak first. people out that it could go to 64 or something. Y yeah. I mean, 66. It, it, there's 73. Here's eight, eight, 68. I'll tell you what though. I'm, I'm, I think I Greg is looking for that Blake, uh, that we could go down there in a complex correction before a low. If stocks continue higher, the one thing that's, for sure to, to follow in the next year is inflation. Oh, yeah. And I uh, think if stocks continue higher here, you have to be long, you know, these commodity currencies, especially the Aussies not breaking below. You could probably now. get long the world after this correction in the S&Ps. If we have except a the dollar, except the dollar. So 70 cents. What do I know? Huge, huge support. Sorry, Dale. I just got. Oh, sorry. I got, I'm, I'm going to continue on before Greg gets here. I don't. Right, wanna, I, okay. I know we I'm going to. I'll there. be back in a minute, bro. Okay. It's 70, the only way I could control my mouth. Uh, let's go. I, I need to get all the way over to the Canadian because we have Canadian GDP in a few minutes. That Stelios would forget to remind me about. So, um, but don't worry. I'm on top of it today. Here's the Kiwi. Yeah, yeah. So the ki <laughs> the Kiwi. 618 retracement is also holding. You see that right here? Okay. 618 retracement is holding and that's a confluence, guys, right here. 
78% retracement. So that comes in at basically 66 cents. Uh, it's 65.90, but whatever. Okay. Um, do I think the Kiwi's bullish? I, I'd, I'd, I'd rather play the Aussie on the long side, but uh, look, if stocks move higher, we're going to just negate this. Uh, we're going to negate this this head and shoulder pattern because look, look at the overall. Uh, let's just look at this for a second. Will you just stop and look? But no, stop what you're doing and look. <laughs> I got your attention. You sound like my mother, man. I got, I got, <laughs> I got your attention. I mean, everybody, you might have been all, you know, looking at other crap. You know, some of you are, you know, surfing the internet and you're like, oh, I, I got to stop and look at this. So look at the Kiwi. I mean, we broke this multi year downtrend line. Yes, we have a head and shoulder pattern, but let's not forget the fact that we're above this multi year trend line, which is bullish in itself. So, you know, if stocks go higher, we are going to, we, we will do this. If we go to all time highs and equities, we are breaking out this way. So don't think I'm, I'm, I'm all hung up on a head and shoulder pattern. The head and shoulder pattern is the least exciting thing for me to actually look at, but I have to recognize it, but that doesn't mean that I'm, you know, shorting the Kiwi right now. I didn't mind shorting the Kiwi when we were up here at 70, uh, 67, uh, 20, which I shorted last earlier this week, I think on Monday. Um, but that was Monday. Today's Friday. Crap's different now, right? It's a different world we live in in a few days. So resistance intraday, 6660. Remember, everything's pretty much uh, a uh, everything's pretty much um, range bound for right now. Here's your hourly head and shoulder pattern on the dollar Canadian. Um, let's see where this thing can go. I mean, because supports right here. We have GDP coming out momentarily, so. Let's just think about what happens here. Uh, basically 132 would be support on any drop. So uh, resistance, 3350. Sorry guys, I'm just doing this quickly. I don't know about you guys, but we just checked uh, another checkbox for 2020. We had a few minutes ago, like a huge earthquake north of Samos and reports are just coming out that buildings actually fell. So probably people died. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, we felt wow. it in Athens. I mean, it was like 40 seconds or so, so. Wow. That's so we checked that box as well. Let's see what else. Oh. We have a double top in the dollar Mexican peso um, setting up, which could take us all the way back down to 2110 today, if that happens. 2150 continues to be key resistance. Uh, we, we, we've been talking, I think we've been writing down 2150 or 2153 um, uh, all week long. So you'd have to go back and take a look at your notes, but I'm, 99% sure we wrote down one of those two levels. 50, 53, it comes, is it 53? Yeah, 20, 20, 21, 53 is the 38% retracement. Um, here's the dollar Swiss, 91.60, still holding. Um, 91.60 support will be 91.20 on dips. I'm not we excited data in 30 that. seconds. Okay. <laughs> All right. How many seconds? 30, 25. Here's the dollar Canadian. Let's just watch this uh, little head and shoulder pattern. We, oh, shoot. I did not want to do that. Okay. <coughs> um, calendar data flash. This comes with your Forex analytics subscription, guys. Here is, oh, we have US Core PCE coming out. Okay. Here we go. Let me get a drink of my coffee while we're waiting for this stuff. 
Canadian GDP. It's a beat. It is. Dollar Canadian ain't doing squat. Let's see. Is, has PCE really just not come out yet? It's late. Yeah, it's late everywhere. Yeah, here's Bloomberg. So uh, industrial production is out worse than expected. This is Bloomberg, guys. This is the uh, economic calendar on Bloomberg on my desktop. But um, OK. Oh, here it is. OK, now it's out. Personal income, a little stronger than expected. Oh, I'm telling you, guys, you know, it, the stocks rally following this election. You just got to buy, probably got to buy the Aussie, buy the Canadian dollar, buy Mexican pesos. You know, just, it, it, we're, we're going to see inflation coming soon. And that's, you know, you, you look at these charts and like even the Aussie, I'll, I'll just do this really quick and then I'm going to, I'm going to get analysis done really quickly. This is the long-term view of the Aussie, but look at this. This is, was, you know, this is the, uh, uh, um, COVID capitulation, if you will. That was such an aggressive move down there. I'm, I'm almost thinking, and you know, I don't like to say this often that, that, that may be a generational low. I, I mean, we may not see that for another, I mean, we, the stock, the, the, the global economy would have to implode um, yeah. completely for that to, to be tested again. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost in that camp right now. But you look at the monthly chart. You could be I mean, right, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I actually think that the Aussie dollar is probably going, you know, into the 80s uh, in yeah. the coming years. So anyway uh okay I, I could you know we could get in a whole conversation yeah. about that which i don't have time to do right now here's the u.s dollar norwegian krona so uh here's here's the u.s dollar here's a double top setting up right support breakout point 940 resistance 960 that's the 161 percent extension of this move so you guys know especially if you're Forex Analytics subscribers, you knew this was going to be a resistance. So you 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 were selling it. You know, look at the analysis. Like I, I said, I love trading Norway. I just didn't do it last night because my focus is on the Aussie right now. But, um, you know, 161% extensions at 959 level held and the 200 DMA was there too. A, a risk of a move back to the 940 level exists at this time. Okay, well... You know, if you're like, well, shoot, I'm going to just sell it when it gets to nine, you know, 59 at that 618. Well, you did well. Okay. So now you just move your stops to break even and hope we get back down to 940 and we get this hourly double top. Hourly double top. We'll take you right back. To 940. Okay. All right. Moving along. Uh, where am I at? Dollar yen. I'm just trying to get this done. Or oh, here's the dollar index. Trying to get this done because Greg is coming. And I hear winter's coming too. Uh, <laughs> I miss Game of funny. Thrones, man. Uh, That's yeah. a good show right up until the end. And then it's Why like, do you miss it? We're living it. Yeah, we are actually. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Um, all right, here's the dollar index. Uh, I do believe we're consolidating. We hit 94 yesterday. We went to 94.10. So we kind of overshot the resistance we wrote. But that's all right. Overshoots, over, 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 over shites are great. Except when you're on the toilet. <laughs> it's so oh my God, I'm cracking myself up today. All right, so 94 is going to be resistance once again. And we'll write down uh, 94 um, as we, you know, try to build this triangle ahead of the election. Um, support today will probably be right down here at 93.60, roughly. 
So that should hold us for today on any dip. Dollar yen. Uh, this is my chart of the day yesterday. I um, I'm going to tell you I, I traded this really poorly yesterday, and I'm going to I'm going to share with you what I did. So um, I was short dollar yen yesterday, and look going into Wednesday. So let me just you know explain to you what happened here. I'm short dollar yen at uh, 104.40, right? Roughly somewhere around this area. I was short because we broke this triangle. We hit new lows and I saw it hit new lows and I saw us diverge and I'm like, yeah, it's probably going to bounce. It did, you know, it bounced and it got right back to 104.40. And this is now it's now it's back to my break even point yesterday. And I'm like, man, this stupid thing is going to break out. It's going to go back above 50 and take all the stops above 50. And I knew it was going to. So I closed out my dollar yen for a loss yesterday. I, I, I end up sitting in it for two days. I lose like six, seven pips on it. And I, and I go, okay, when it breaks 50, I'm going to trade it on the long side because now it's going to catch everybody short. I'm going to get long. I got long at 52. And then it flip, it just flip-flopped around for like 10 minutes, around 50 to 52, back to 49, back to 52. It got to 52 and I said, you know what? Screw it. And I took it off for break even. And then literally as soon as I took it off for break even, it spiked up into the 70s, really within probably one minute of me getting out. So I've left it alone since, but man, that was a frustrating three days for me in this dollar yen, two days for me. Do we get a false breakdown? Uh, I, I just have to point out that we don't spend a lot of time below 104, 105, really. If you look, this is a monthly chart. We just don't spend a lot of time below 105. So uh, you have to be really careful being on the short side. I don't, I'm not, I'm not shorting it unless we get back below 104. So I'm going to write that down. I honestly find it hard to believe that this is a free floating currency. Yeah, I, I, I'm just not going to be excited about it unless we get back above 105. That's it. I'm just going to leave it alone because it's so, so ungodly frustrating right now. And it's probably not going to move until the election. So last but not least, let me just do this really quick. And I know um, uh, Greg is here and, you know, Steve's got to say something. Stelios has got to say something. Everybody's got to say something. So I'm just trying to finish this up. 1890. Uh, and what we wrote down yesterday is 1860. Same, I think the same numbers, right? You guys have fun with that because that's what we're dealing with. Okay, so there's your bias chart. It's done. It's finished. And, it's and you notice everything says range. That's what that's what makes this so fun. All right, Steve Stelios. It's Thank all you, yours. Professor Morrow. Hey, Blake. Uh, Thank you. TGIF guys, good luck. <laughs> yeah, uh, hey, started nicely you know, here in Greece. <laughs> hey, yeah, the, yeah, was yeah, an yeah, earthquake. Let's, let's, I, I really, really hope you guys don't, you know, witness another earthquake. Did that, you feel it, Steve? Oh yeah, the building was shaking for like forty seconds, and oh, imagine it was, uh, you know, it was really far away, it's East Greece. But unfortunately, from what I see. Um, buildings have fell both in the west coast of Turkey and in these islands, so pretty sure wow. there are dead people. So, so let's just let's. Um, so if I move from California really to Greece while, while we're here, okay. So this is a map of Greece. Um, if if you guys have never been to Greece, this is one of my favorite places on the face of the planet. The only reason why I partnered up with Steven Stelios is. So when, you know, so he can I, have free vacations. I, yeah. When I have no place to vacation, you know, um, that that's, that's it. Um, by the way, that is where it happened. Blake, if you see that Island, Northern, Northern East, East side of Greece, East, east side. Okay. East. Okay. That's east. the West. Northeast. Oh yeah. Over here. <laughs> east, Never Eastern east center. Yeah. Samos. Uh, Samos. More, more to the left and lower. Oh. More to the left, uh, to the right. Sorry, uh, that, that now. Okay, oh, right there. Oh, yeah. yes. oh okay. wow! Right on the border. Yeah, and imagine yeah. We, 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 the building was uh, was shaking in in Athens, which you can see how far away it is, like for forty seconds. Wow! 
Wow, that's crazy. How many well, miles see, away you, is Athens from there? You see, you see all of these islands. The reason why I they're so know, must be five hundred, four hundred of all the ah, miles over the years. Three hundred. Yeah. Wow, yeah, I'm that's a powerful guys. one, man. Yeah. Huh? So do do all those islands get inundated after that? Do you uh, like many tsunamis on those islands? Sometimes no, listen. The, the good thing about the Aegean Sea is that is it's it's very calm because as you see, it's a, like more of a yeah. closed sea. Yeah. So I don't think there is. I mean, they gave a tsunami warning, but we've never had them one in history, as far as we know, because okay. you know there is there is not enough. Like you know, space, open for ocean, it. yeah, exactly like, for the wave yeah. to build, and exactly, and that's why it's always nice and you know, calm, even you know, during the summer, and it's also a warm sea, yeah, got it. All right, guys, well, hey, that. um, Steve, go ahead and take over from here. Um, no, 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 let Gregor, every... let Gregor grab uh, it, yeah, Gregor's coming, um. And uh, I want to say, have a, hey, guys, before, before we go, uh, remember, if you want to try to get Forex analytics for free, you have, you, you can, you can um, for a period of time, you just become a Pepperstone trader um, a customer and you can go to the Forex sponsored page on our website and you can learn about Pepperstone, one of the biggest FX brokers in the world. And uh, you have to use this link because that signals us that you've done so. And then we can link your accounts and give you some time to join our community because this there is no better time right now than to take a trial of Forex analytics because you get to use it for 10 days. It's only a dollar. And then you can be in our chat room uh, through this election process. Um, and you can, this is, this is, I'm going to just show you our chat room and this is the, a boring Friday. And there is, we're still talking and, you know, posting charts and, you know, I mean, and this is Friday on a Friday morning where usually it's super slow. So um, it'll be hopping here through the elections. So it's $1 just to, you know, even have some friendly support, you know, people that you can talk to that are, you know, focused on the market. So, all right, guys, that's it for me. Have a great one. Have a great you have weekend. Have a good one, Everybody. Blake. Have a great weekend, buddy. You too. Bye. Enjoy. Enjoy. Bye. Hey, hey, Gregor. Go, hey, hey, Wizard. Go hey. ahead and grab the screen. Yeah, already doing that. So, where are we surfing? Yeah. <laughs> That's the question, huh? Okay. You see the charts? Yes. Okay, where is the election result? Come on. Is there some elite wave count for that? Yeah, I would not be surprised if Trump wins and stocks recovers. I mean, Everything is perfectly positioned for that. Yeah, in, in 2020, nothing would surprise me in any case. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, markets don't like uncertainty. If Trump wins, we know what we will get. If Biden wins, we don't know actually what will follow. How about if neither win, uh, neither are declared a winner for a month because of it being contested in the courts? Well, then we just stay sideways. I guess. Mm, so. I'm not sure, Greg. I think probably the reaction is going to be lower until we yeah, get something sure. yeah. conclusive. Yeah. So I think Bush Gore, I don't know how many weeks that took before it went to the Supreme Court. I think it was a month. The hanging chads um, and Gore conceded. No, no one's going to gracefully concede to this one. If it's yeah, that's what I would say. And in any case, yeah. back then things were a lot less. Yeah polarized you know what i mean yeah <clears throat> okay so there's greg okay Greg's so ready. Right. uh what will we look at the s p first yeah. i i think gregor we can start with the standard uh set of the dollar and the s p one as yeah. the the most important let's say uh, top-down thing you look at when you look at the FX markets and oh, one, yeah. of course, as the risk barometer. Yeah, I mean, dollar is still in downtrend. What And uh, what I see is just complex correction is still going on here. Um, and actually, we haven't seen such an aggressive sell-off on, uh, or I should, on uh, majors, uh, despite seeing a very strong sell-off on stocks. 
So if yeah. stock finds a support, I think that the dollar could be easily sent to the downside, or mm -hmm. I should say commodity currencies would have a strong bounce. I mean, look at New Zealand dollar. I mean, it it fell, what, uh, 150 pips or so. It's it's actually not much considering where we uh, came down with crude oil and uh, with with stock market. So Good I point. It's still boosting. It's still boosting higher lows. I mean, if you look at it, there is nothing bearish about it. Yeah, exactly. So I I still think that if we find a uh, very good support, maybe next week, maybe on Wednesday, uh, I think that uh, dollar is about still to continue lower. And looking at this dollar index chart, it just confirms the idea that we are not reversing impulsively higher. Uh, we are just consolidating here. And I would not be surprised to see another drop here and retest of these uh, early September levels. Can we go to 95 and a half first? What happens if we take out the high up there at 94 if, or whatever? If we take out the high, then I would probably look for this way for it to be flat correction. Okay. Thank so you, Gregor. The key is that the first lag from the lows was in three waves, not in five waves. And always right. when that's the case, then you know that either that's a completed correction or part of a complex correction. Like we are tracking it now. So, so if we correct. had if we had a quality from B down there at uh, ninety two thirty, ninety two forty, that would take you there, yeah, right? Ninety five. Exactly. Okay. Yes. But so far, this move towards ninety five, I mean, looks promising based on this short term structure because this could be also yeah. uh, ongoing impulse, not necessarily uh, a free wave rally like I have labeled now. I mean, it's still a little bit early to say where we are here because both of the patterns are incomplete. So we are in the middle of this process. Okay, okay. thank and, you, wizard. And since we mentioned this, the S&P 500, I mean, even here, we have only three wave drop, okay? And uh, we could be making here also now five waves down for a wave C, or if we can hold these September levels, then this can still transform into a triangle that like we discussed with uh, day last week. So uh, in my opinion, it would be too early to say that we are going to see uh, a very unexpected shock here because the, this is not March when uh, everything was new. Um, I think it's markets are or investors are positioned much better this time or more careful. So um, I would not be surprised that if we see this dip from uh, September highs, like a temporary correction and just maybe to put some fear into the markets, but then I eventually think that we could be turning higher again. Uh, but even uh, in this all uh, uncertainty, I think that gold is still uh, having a very nice pattern here. Uh, but firstly, for a continuation higher, but firstly, we have to complete this wave four. Uh, I discussed last week that uh, we are still not seeing this five-way price from the lows to say that gold completed the correction, but rather forming a triangle here. And maybe we are headed down for a final push towards 1800 even. And then I would be on the watch for a potential bounce. But generally speaking, still, this is a very strong uh, uptrend, uh, while a decline from the highs is not strong at all. And even if you'll take a look, uh, just let me uh, share another screen here. If we will take a look here on the 10 year US notes, just a second. <clears throat> yeah, they're coming out of here. Okay, so if you see here the 10 year US oh. notes, we are still in uptrend. I think we are now just consolidating and looking at the correlation, obviously, with gold, um, they both. Uh, actually very nice to turn to the upside here in 2000 at the end of 2018. Um, so if this 10-year US notes is going to see more upside, I think that gold here will also uh, make a very nice push higher. And based on what is going on, I, I just assume that this could be a very nice setup actually. So I'm just waiting on this gold to complete this current uh, retracement and then uh, watch out for more or potentially even on the short uh, term, some long opportunities. Uh, now let me go back to those charts. 
Okay, now also another market that is important uh, is crude oil. Uh, so crude oil is now coming perfectly down into this third leg of this ABC structure. I'm tracking a zigzag here. And um, always when you see a correction, what I'm expecting is a retracement back to the way uh, to the former wave four, which in our case is around 34.60, or even back towards 38.2, which is slightly above $30 per barrel. So this whole zone, I think it's a very, very important for- $29 us. also a nice area of support, uh, Grega. If you look at the continuous, yeah. Uh -huh, okay, good. Yeah, so I mean, that's definitely an important zone where we just have to be aware uh, of potential bounce. Maybe some who would look for stocks, uh, for uh, oil stocks, uh, I think that maybe they will already start scaling in their positions for maybe for a longer term uh, view. So uh, I still think that next year crude oil will be higher um, and we just maybe have to wait on this current madness to wait on those lockdowns they could not continue uh, forever obviously um, so we will see what brings uh, December maybe then we will already have more answers to that uh, but from an Elliott wave perspective it's a very beautiful setup um, as I said we are in wave C wave C should be made by five sub waves for now that's not the case yet so maybe another push down maybe as we said towards 34 maybe even 30 dollars per barrel but then uh, watch out for a potential for a potential bounce here uh, also at the same time we can look at dollar cat since we know that if crude oil will bounce dollar cat could uh, complete its correction uh, so for now i'm tracking still this way for same story like with uh, dollar index maybe that's going to be a flat maybe it's going to be ongoing triangle um, but in both cases again i think that these levels here from start of the year could come in play yeah as, as you understand usd knock looks very very similar to usd yeah yeah and, and I, i'm uh, definitely looking to add more to my position now that it's rebounding on dollar knock yeah 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 yeah, let me just check this out in the structure there. <clears throat> Maybe we'll see a retest of these highs here, if that was way A and you have... I think we can even see a move higher than that, towards like 980. Uh, we have a nice resistance area. Yeah, something like that. That's what I'm w waiting for. Yeah, it looks definitely overall, or generally speaking, looks very clear pattern. You have five waves down, uh, down you have three waves up. So mm -hmm. it actually just confirms the overall look for potential more dollar weakness and crude oil bounce. Even if you have a look at USD SEC, it looks somewhat similar as well. Also clearly a corrective rebound. I mean, all of those look really really weak i mean the reactions that we've had higher look really really weak yeah so but as i said i mean for to me the most important is that crude oil came significantly to the downside to very strong moves stocks as well but dollar did not move yeah barely so rebounded much. yeah yeah that 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 and and gregor to add to that this is not the first time this is actually the second uh, time, because even if we consider the reaction that the dollar had, um, given the huge uh, destruction of um, equity prices in the first COVID phase, even there, considering you know that stocks were getting decimated, the dollar's reaction was not what somebody would expect. We didn't get a higher high in the dollar. So I think this is the second time that we see, um, you know, that the dollar is not actually willing to act as much as a safe haven as it did uh, in the past. Yeah. So, I mean, it's definitely worth, worth to observe those commodity currencies, in my opinion. There could be a very good buy. I'm, I'm more skeptical on the euro, despite having 
quite nice structure, also looking corrective from the highs. But uh, it looks like it appears that the uh, situation in Europe with lockdowns, it, it's much more serious than, than anywhere else. Um, but if I remember uh, correctly, I'm, I think that even in March, there was a delay with same uh, restrictions in the US. So we'll see what happens in the US in, in the next two weeks. Maybe actually this current... I'm, I'm assuming from, from the rhetoric I've heard and Dale having boots on the ground can, you know, can either confirm or uh, deny that. I'm assuming that Biden is likely to, uh, you know, uh, put things in lockdown. Uh, yeah. Trump has clearly said that he, he isn't. Uh, but if Biden wins, I think there is a decent chance that it can happen in the US as well. Yeah, but you know, maybe Trump is now no. in the game just trying uh, to get more votes from those who are against the restrictions. And we know that majority is... Worried. So you mean if the elections are over, even if he has won, he might be more inclined since, uh, you, you know. If, yeah, I mean, if the situation worsens, then maybe he will have no choice but do it, what's necessary, even if he wins. Yeah. Who, I mean, Trump? Yeah. The, he'll let the governors do it on a local level. He'll do it on a state by state level. They that's what he's done all the way through. Except for that, you know, he did have that period. But I think they're gonna let localities decide on hot spots what to shut down. But uh, you know, it seems like both of them really don't want to and you know, what's going on in Europe uh, I don't think is like the last lockdowns, are they? Not yet, uh, and I don't think, I think they're going to try to avoid as hard as possible a right. complete uh, yeah. lockdown, yeah. but, you know, restrictions uh, have become extremely harsh. They've, uh, I mean, in some of the countries, they've now completely closed down restaurants yeah, we cannot, and bars. We, yeah, we are yeah, and you cannot like, country. yeah, you cannot like be out without a very good reason. Let's say after like nine o'clock here in Greece, it's now like 12 o'clock at night. Um, yeah. So no, it's not an exact like full lockdown like we had right. the previous time. Yeah. And they'll probably avoid doing that. They, they've also, thankfully, in my opinion, they've also um, avoided closing schools. Uh, yeah. Because, I, yeah, that, that's a big problem, as you understand. I mean, parents at work don't know what to do with the kids. Um, and, you know, if schools lock down, you know, kids, especially young kids, you know, they, they have a big gap in... If, if schools will lock down here in Slovenia, then my wife will probably get very nervous in the next two weeks because I'm going on therapist for that knee surgery that I had mm -hmm. for two weeks. And as you know, Zala and Vid, they are six and seven years old and both going to school. So imagine work from home, uh, do lunch. Yeah, and having home. two kids running around. So have yeah. both kids school from home and you are alone. I mean, it's, you yeah, cannot, it's a nightmare. Yeah, I mean, you cannot work like that for like a month or two months. I mean, it's. That's a nice excuse to go away for two weeks, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, now, I, I, I'm now starting doubting that you even had a uh, yeah. in your Steve, knee. Steve, your, <laughs> your knee bothering you today? Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I should check it out. I might need a little bit of a surgery and then some, you know, two week therapy at some, <laughs> at some exotic place <laughs> on planet Earth. <laughs> Well, uh, Greg, we have a minute if you want to wrap it because uh, Mark Newton is in the house. I see you, Mark. Yeah, still, as I said, I'm expecting, uh, I would not be actually surprised to see stock markets uh, maybe trying uh, to reverse higher, maybe already uh, towards the end of next week. At the same time, we see US dollar uh, recovering, but not much, which is a very important evidence that if stocks bounce, dollar could fall dramatically. But uh, the most important asset that I would probably look for a bounce is uh, gold and crude oil could also be a very nice, uh, very nice opportunity from an investment perspective, but not yet. 
I would say that towards the end of the year or next year, the crude oil uh, could be much higher. Greg, uh, um, I think I've asked you before, but you know, not everybody's there every time. Um, on the long term, uh, on a long term chart, uh, what do you think this move lower in in dollar is? Honestly, it's still a little bit. Um, it's, it's still a little bit early to say, um, but we could just take here consolidating for for a while here between those 2016 lows and 2018 highs. I'm still undecided if this is going to be just a temporary bounce for a wave B, and we go lower, or are we going to see much more upside? But as long as we are holding those levels, support and important resistance, uh, I think that uh, I just have to be aware of more weakness once current bounce is finished. But for now, it's still unfolding. Okay, mate. Thank you. So I'm more neutral here for now. Thank okay. you. Have a good Let's weekend, see. wizard. You too. Thank, thank you, Greg. Have a nice weekend. Let's see now. Is 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 the third time going to be the charm for Mark? <laughs> yeah, it will be. I think so as well. <laughs> you know why? Because Mark Newton is a pro who has persevered for many years to hone his craft. <laughs> You're very kind. Dale. Yeah. Hey, Mark. How are you, buddy? How are you doing? How's everybody? Great. Nice to be here. Okay. So, um, you know, the last time you were on, did we get this week what you were looking for before your interview was uh, terminated early? The accident. Yeah, I mean, you know, my my uh, a lot of the cycle stuff I look at suggested that we would see some type of a peak again in mid October. Um, Unfortunately, we won't be able to. We weren't able to talk about that in detail. But you know, I, I think that this is going to turn out to be very much like 2018, not not 2019. And so, a lot of the seasonal strength that many people historically uh, see in Q4, I think, whether it be because of the election, which a lot of people will say it is because of, but a lot of the cycles tend to, uh, you know, really turn down pretty sharply between now and the end of November. Uh, you know, the real question is whether December is going to be an up month or whether we sell off right into the solstice on the 22nd. There's a lot of cyclical stuff that points towards a, a big inflection there. And so I'm sort of wondering whether stocks weaken, uh, you know, whether you know, the consensus anyway is that we're going to bounce, right? Yeah. Everybody I've talked to, a lot, a lot of the pushback I've gotten is that, you know, be very careful. This is a tricky week and heading into the election, you really want to be long and we're going to bounce. I just, I'm not certain that we're going to get that result that everybody's looking for, um, you know, and to, so to bail, yeah, to bail them out yet. People thought we were going to bounce into the FANG earnings, of course, at big tech earnings yeah. last night. And, and now we're lower. And of course we have rebounded off those lows, but as here's just a, a chart of, uh, you know, S and P on an hourly basis. So yeah, we have made a little bit of progress. We've gotten up above these prior lows that were breached. So, you know, that's a minor positive. If you want to say it that, but you know, in general, it's still quite dicey, you know, I mean, we yeah. literally just started to roll over on very heavy breadth and volume momentum and, and, and breadth have been waning since the 12th in the middle part of October. And, uh, you know, the defensive trading has picked up. We've seen some real uh, underperformance in technology of late, not just big cap tech, but regular tech. And, and of course, the dollar started to move up. And of course, that's a big, also something that we all know is, is important. So, yeah, and the, the clouds, uh, Mark, as one of our attendees has pointed out that every bounce stayed beneath the bottom of the cumulus nimbus clouds. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I like to use these on many different time frames. I find they're quite useful. And, and many times the cloud can, can act as resistance or support, even if a trend is, is broken. It, it, you know, it's always important to keep those handy. But yeah, you notice on the bottom half of the chart that we are seeing some Crosses. You know, a little bit of positive divergence on this yeah. little pullback, and so yeah. RSI you know, three drive. We're, we're, we're in a time yeah. when it's it's you know the, the cyclical time for this period between now and the 14th doesn't suggest massive acceleration. It suggests more choppiness, and that you want to take profits right away. And so, you know, be, be prepared for a quick choppy counter trend type movement. But you know, the, the trend obviously is still very much uh, down, no matter what your time frame, and still it's it's. You know, we've seen that acceleration lower 
momentum is clearly rolled over. Uh, we're not really that oversold. So, you know, does this turn out to be a triangle and then we push back the high? I, I'm sort of skeptical. I think any sort of rally we get after the election proves short lived and then we can see. Where's the, the bottom of where's the bottom of that red cloud on the chart we're at right now? Uh, that's like 3340. OK, probably so, like yeah, a 30. My, my, yeah, that'd be a good place to fade it. If we got there, don't you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was well, the number of things that come into, to, you know, it's not just price alone, but, but yeah. Uh, yeah, certainly, uh, you know, you want to try to identify when trends and not only from just short term, you know, you want to look at hourly, you want to look at the bottom of the first move up and then the, the pullback. And so obviously this area near 30, you know, the bottom of this move also, uh, 3,400 is going to have a lot of significance. So, yeah. You know, I, I think was, the middle part of November has a lot of importance for inflection. And then after that, you can start to see. Uh, so anyway, I, I wanted to run through just a few of the FANG charts. I think they're very important. One of the key messages that people should realize is that if the market is truly made up of only five or six stocks, and particularly Apple being, what, 13% of the Qs, then it's really important to use these stocks to either confirm or dispute what you think about the indices, because this is really the market at this point. So, you know, Apple today is trading down under 110. Uh, oh, this is, I'm sorry, this is NVIDIA. Uh, yeah, Apple, here's Apple. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, failing rally up there at 127, lower high. Maybe a so B this, or a this two. This is a chart that I, I share with people just uh, on a monthly basis, you know, going back, uh, uh, you know, the fact that you look at a log chart of Apple and everybody in the world was clamoring to buy it when it was going to split four for one. Right. And then, you know, the stock promptly uh, sort of crapped out a little bit. We haven't really had the degree, but, you know, the stock has been okay. It hasn't really shown a, a substantial amount of uh, – of, of, of weakness but uh you know here's the longer term trend just from 2013 is down near literally 50 dollars. so wow. you know momentum has gotten extraordinarily overbought when you get on a monthly basis to over 85 you look back in apple over the last 30 years it's only gotten up to that level like five other occasions and each one of those times you know the stock literally Back in 87, it went sideways for almost a dozen years, you know, and, and, and yeah. in 2000, obviously it dropped 80%. Same thing in 07, we got to RSI levels of near 95. We dropped, you know, from split adjusted $7 down to, you know, two, 250. So, yeah. you know, I don't know. I think that the, the big tech right now is being attacked right now from both the right and from the left. And I think that's really important that, 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 that both sides are sort of pissed off at technology at a sector that's managed to not only invade all of our lives, but, but take up the majority of uh, percentages in a lot of our indices and ETFs, you know? And so I look at mm -hmm. just equal weighted technology versus equal weighted S&P. And this peaked out back in May. So you had a pretty decent rally up until May. Since then, it's been really choppy. And so... Yes, the FANG stocks have done okay into August where most of them peaked. But, um, you know, this has started to really tail off. You look at MACD turning down. If this red line is broken as an indication of trend for technology, given that tech is still the largest percentage sector, then we're going to start to see real underperformance and uh, and largely a, a larger market pullback. Could this be uh, like six, eight months of distribution? That's, that's correct. Yeah, the last... Uh, yeah, so this is since uh, since May. Okay. So we have we have five five and a half months of, uh, of choppiness in equal weighted tech in terms of how it's performed. Right. Whereas like the utilities have done quite well, and that's one thing. The yeah, dollar, I think, is that's something defensive. we'll talk about in a minute. But yeah. Oh I mean, yeah, I saw your downtrend line in the Dixie. I hope you don't yeah, mind. I mean, well, let's let's talk. Let me share a few more charts on Optima, and I'll switch over to trading Go view, ahead. and I'll show some cycles. But yeah, like Microsoft. I mean, this is. Uh, anything but all that healthy in a short-term basis. It's very much stalled out since July. Looks like a head and shoulders top, bro. It could be. It could be. Yeah. I mean, the, the lows need to be taken out. And that's the right. key that I tell everybody to try to front run these patterns because oftentimes they can just be consolidations and then lead higher. But 
yeah, for the first time in most of the FANG stocks, you're seeing very similar formations. Uh, Lower you know, peaks. So very similar. I mean, a lot of these are just uh, really starting to, yeah, pardon my colors, it's been uh, an interesting transition for me in trying to figure it all out. So, but yeah, a lot of the, even Amazon, very similar patterns where you have the highest yeah. high was made in early September. You haven't been able to surpass that. So, you know, we're seeing tech waning. But the question is, can these other sectors really uh, continue to pick up the slack and, and, uh, and, and show a similar amount of, uh, of following through on, on holding? You know, rates have started to stabilize a little bit. We saw a big tick up in, in yields. And then, you know, even the last, yesterday was, uh, you know, a decent, pattern to be able to uh to snap back i think that's interesting but you know breath here's the breath and just looking at the percentage of stocks for example above the 200 day which is now only about 50 percent of all stocks 57 percent as of yesterday so it's dropped down pretty sharply from 70 back in october uh percentage above their 20 is down to 16 and above the 50 is only a third so you only have a third of all stocks that are above their 50 to moving average, even though markets really haven't shown that much weakness. I mean, we're down 5% this week, but you know, the AD line is sort of interesting when you look at the composite, the fact that we're nowhere near all time highs and, uh, and here's the advanced decline, which double topped and now is starting to just falling off pretty dramatically. So yes, you know, if we moved up above these highs and I would have a little bit more conviction, we can rally, but I'm actually thinking markets weaken into December and then we have a spring rally. And then as of next spring, if the cycles continue to, to work the way they have, the, the next spring you really want to be out of stocks and, and that you want to buy into pullbacks into either late November or the middle part of December and then likely be prepared to sell out of any rally into the spring. Okay. Uh, yeah, sentiment, sentiment. So we're coming up on an election. I just want to make a couple comments about that because I mean okay. it's gotten very, it's gotten very close. And, and you know, to, to me, everybody in the world has been talking politics basically from a negative standpoint, even though the platforms are completely different. Um, it, it should be very easy. Either you're for the platform or you're against it. But yet everybody's, you know, going into character assassination. But yet the spread is pretty pretty small. So everybody says Trump's going to lose in a landslide. It's going to be a blue wave. Well, Rasmussen has the spread at three. So, I mean, that's like the Chiefs being a 19 point favorite over the Jets. And all of a sudden you see the spread at one. People's like, oh, no way. The Chiefs are going to kill him. Well, maybe, but there's a reason why the spread is that low. Obviously, that, that's a pretty accurate poll. So it's going to be a lot closer result than many people think. And definitely and I, contested, I Mark. Contested. Huh? It will definitely be contested if it's close, especially. Right. I mean, they're all lawyered up, right? I, I, I mean, agree. They're, I agree that both said, "Look, there's over, there's over, there's over." I heard there's 80 million ballots that have been submitted absentee, so there's really no way it can be counted as of November the third. If anything, I mean, that that's gonna, it's gonna be a, an election month, but I'm thinking it'll be contested both ways and it's going to be pushed out till December, January. And, uh, you know, I think if Biden were to have a clean sweep on November 3rd, then he would win. I think that it's going to be contested though. And I think there's a good shot that Trump wins it if it's carried out till January. And so not to talk politics at all, but I just think that, that it's going to be a lot tighter and that indecision, everybody's thinking, Okay, market's weak now, but we're going to rally after the flag. Okay, that didn't work. So now it's going to rally after the election. Well, maybe, but but I, I don't think that we're going to have all that much relief after the election. So if that's your reason for buying, then you really have to challenge that. Um, all right, let me let me just right. share a couple of charts. Nice, nice insight, Mark. I'm going to see if I can do this here. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to put you on face the nation. So here's the VIX <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sick of arguing. Uh, I know, I know, it's, bro. It's been a crazy trend. So, so here's yeah. the chart of the VIX. This is sort of yeah. interesting that yeah. you know you have had this large base that re and, and it's tough to look at applied volatility based in technicals, but in general, you know certain patterns do tend to stand the test of time. And the first time we've seen you know the backwardation, we didn't see that in, in September, October when markets were selling off. And so now, interestingly enough, you do uh, you do see that. But yeah, let's just look at a dollar or just a Dixie chart real quick because 
I do view this as being something investors really have to pay attention to carefully. Uh, I view this as being a, uh, a likely three-wave bounce, and we saw wave A is an ABC up, a wave B right. is down, and now we should have a five-wave advance into the latter part of November, which should be a huge selling opportunity for the dollar, buying opportunity for sterling and euro. Yeah. But, but yeah. That, that right now, this dollar advance should cause real havoc for the metals. And so I think the metals likely are going to have a final pullback that takes us down under 1800 in, uh, in gold. I think yesterday the market showed its two days ago, on Tuesday, yeah. uh, Wednesday, the market showed its uh, hand with regards to the metals, which have been sort of stagnating. And so, yeah, you really have to reckon with a lot if you're bullish on the metals with the dollar breakout and yield starting to turn higher. Uh, and here's the just the yield chart too. You know, you've started to push up again in 10-year yeah. treasury. So if the dollar and yields move higher, then the real rates moving up are going to be really detrimental to any of those that try to buy metals. Uh, the other right. thing is that crude is starting to really weaken, and that's also facing a cycle where we're going to start to, to drop off measurably. So, you know, this is a bearish time of the year. We, we actually took out two prior lows from September, October in WTI. So for me, that is a uh, that's something to really be concerned about that, that, that you can see, even though energy has been... <laughs> The whipping boy, it's been so yeah. hard hit, it just shellacked. But especially, especially the oil down shares down. have been even worse. Yeah. That's still an area it's really difficult to buy into in, in the area we want to avoid and or short. I mean, for those that are clients, you know, you know that I have a couple of energy shorts on my focus list and, and then I do like, you know, this area is one to avoid. And, uh, but yeah, it's just a, it's a selective time. You really have to be careful about what you uh, what you own and the sentiment seems to have gotten you know actually more constructive coming into this past week you know it was interesting that we had all these problems or people to be concerned about being you know contentious election economy slow to rebound lack of stimulus COVID. covid on the rise no vaccine it's only recently that you know you saw the AII, the individual investor poll, really joined, it went to neutral, and it's been negative the entire year. So now individuals are finally convinced that the Fed has their back, rates are going to stay low. They're convinced that a Biden win is no longer going to be bad for the market because everybody says the right. blue wave initially, all those you know, wizards from all the high Wall Street firms wrote the reports saying that, that this could be a real negative and strip nine points off GDP. Now everybody's saying, well, there's going to be so much stimulus that it's not going to matter. Well, maybe yes, maybe no, but but still, we're you know I, I think it's funny the way that people have gotten really complacent about the election of late and the Fed and or some stimulus is going to come down the pike. So that for me is is a concern when you start to see sentiment on the individual side join institutional sentiment. And so, you know, granted we're not there, we're not ecstatic, obviously. And, and this week's weakness has brought things back into you know, it's, it's guarded, right. But it's yeah. certainly not all that complacent, if anything. And it's very, it's definitely not fearful. That's for sure. So I, I think it sets up for a really interesting period of volatility in the latter part of, uh, of, of December. Okay. Um, I want to share one more screen with you. And uh, cause this is interesting because I joined the foundation of study of cycles and ran the NY composite cycle going back 40 years. And you know, here's a cycle that pinpointed highs pretty correctly back in the early part of 18, the latter part. It was early by about a month this year. And, you know, uh, you know what, what's, what's funny is that it shows a pretty dramatic sell-off into the end of November, mid-December before a pretty big rally into the year end. So yeah, for those that are nice. aware of the cycles, yes, we do have obviously a lot of energy coming up into end of year, January, February. But uh you know, I would argue that markets likely sell into that that part and be similar to 2018 versus just thinking that after election, it's going to be up, up and away and everything's great. Uh, the other is the VIX cycle. And I like this only because it is an exact opposite cycle, you know, and, and as you expect, I mean, markets are going to sell off, the VIX should rise. But yeah, this shows a move up and, and not really all that much tempering. Like it shows the VIX actually moving pretty much higher into the end of the year. Uh, yeah, nice. Year. Yeah, that's a cool chart. I'm glad you're involved with these guys. 
Yeah, it, it's look, it, it's a it's a great organization. I, I really respect the work of uh, Andy Pancioli and uh, Bill Sarubi, uh, aka Bill Meridian, who's on the board. And uh, you know, I, I Lars Vantinen, Vantinen, sorry, uh, he's uh, been kind enough to make the Cycle Finder available. And Dr. Smith, they have a lot of archives, which they just brought uh, and, and established a new uh, setup in Virginia. And so I'm happy to be uh, able to. Uh, a member and just take a look at all the different cycles and yeah and now you're comfortable and now you're comfortable talking about this stuff mark which i think is a breakthrough <laughs> well what look, do you think I, I man think that, I, I think that i think that i think that uh look i, I think that uh, it's important to use all different inputs in your yeah. process it's certainly there not you go the fed it's certainly not earnings the Fed is not going to be able to prevent the decline. That's a problem. Everybody thinks you follow the Fed, and that's true. But the deficits now are at levels where you can't just continue to ramp up fiscal stimulus, and you certainly can't jack taxes when we're in a session. So it's an interesting, you know, how do you actually fix the economy and grow productivity when when things are dire? And that's my yeah. uh, that's my issue. This was like so a uh, Sir Isaac Newton uh, presentation about gravity. And uh, why don't you show your website and so that people during this critical time in the markets um, can be in touch with your thoughts, which, you know, Mark, uh, uh, you know, Blake, you're Blake's favorite. You're one of my favorites, favorite guests that we have here. And, uh, you know, uh, well, I hope to I hope to make it to your favorite soon, Bill. But yeah, can everybody see? This uh, well, soon? you know, you're only you keep <laughs> keep trying. I you know, know I have a few technical difficulties, but some uh, of them aren't my own doing. So. Well, I know, but yeah, you know, uh, I it, I have to be a diplomat because <laughs> I I have yeah. Mark. I have one thousand favorites. I got you. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway, Fair enough. Right. so yeah, I'm at newtonadvisor.com. Uh, you yeah. can follow me at Mark Newton CMT or simply send. Uh, you know, an, an email to info at newtonadvisor.com. And I'm happy to put you on a trial or send you, I put out two reports a day. I do a video every day, midday to describe what I see as being the most important movements in the market and sector rotation and areas of importance for those that like to trade. But yeah, mostly it's a, just a broad based technical discussion, very thorough and, and detailed, very short term oriented on where the S&P can go, where FX, uh, commodities, and, you know, I, I tend to run the gamut and I look at a lot of cycles and time work and sentiment. And so uh, I think it, you know, it's, it's for anybody that has a, a need for direction in this market, that's not just buying every dip, uh, you know, stop by, see what we're you doing. Have the best, you have the best holistic view of the market. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. So, uh, I mean, you take everything, you, 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 you put the jigsaw puzzle together for people mark so uh again thanks for coming in during this important time in our history and sharing your work with us and uh we appreciate you here at face my trading warrior brother i appreciate that be safe everybody and happy and uh keep your chins up the election will be over before you know it hopefully we'll return to normal within about 18 months <laughs> okay <laughs> take care <laughs> All right. thanks mark all, all right. right all right take it easy so everyone that's a wrap for a week we only have <laughs> another 18 months of this. How, you guys okay with that? I'm, I'm going to hide my razor blades right now and my rope. Um, I'm going to hide them in the wall safe and try and stay away from them. <laughs> anyway, everyone, have a great weekend. Um, you know, we're, we're here for you. We'll be trading through the election. And remember, remember, at times in the market, what's more important is the return of capital rather than the return on capital. So don't just count your pips, count your blessings, everyone. Welcome, Galaxy, Giuseppe, David, all my trading warrior brothers and sisters. Have a great weekend. Adios. You're welcome, Richard. Valencia, see ya. See ya, Jeff. Back at you. That's right. Do your work over the weekend so you're prepared to execute instead of impulse trading. Shabbat shalom. Inshallah. 
Nostrovia. Okay. <laughs> 